Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, today it's a build update on the two uh, scale model builds, or two out of the three that I've got going on at the moment. Uh, we've got the uh, 1 in 35 scale Schwimmwagen from Tamiya, uh, an old kit, and uh, another old kit, the 1 in 35 uh, Merkava, uh, also from Tamiya. So uh, we'll be having a look at those in a minute. And uh, oh, and the one of the Alpine figures just to show the bit of work I've uh, I've managed to be able to commence on him. But first, uh, a couple of thank yous. Uh, two YouTubers have sent me things uh, in the last couple of weeks. I've just been waiting to do a video, so I'm just vainly trying to find things. Uh, Otto Titzling, I think that's how I pronounce it, uh, sent me this. It's a 54mm kit, I think it's 54mm, I could be wrong, it doesn't actually say, probably does, oh it does, 54mm. Now this is one of these old Airfix uh, kits, uh, they call it like collector series, and I haven't seen these since I was a youngster, you know, I never did build one, it was always uh, the plastic figures for me, you know, as we all, most of us did, um, but they were always there, I always picked them up and had a look at them and put them down because I could get more soldiers for me. <laughs> for me money than I could for the for the one figure. That's probably what it was anyway. And to be honest with you, if I did try to paint it as a youngster, it would look nothing like the, the artwork. So thank you very much Mara for that. I really do appreciate it. Um you know it's uh, it was really kind to send that out to me and uh, it is in the pipeline. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a um what i what I'm anticipating with this one is to uh, do a quick unboxing video but but leave it uh you know, I'll, I'll save it and uh, paint the figure up and then we'll do it all in as a quick or not so quick video. So thanks a lot Mara for that, I do appreciate it. And my Mara, or mate, in Sweden, Frederick, from the Hobby Shack Sweden. I can't believe he sent me this out. Um, we're both doing T55s, obviously mine's completely hit a wall. It almost hit a wall literally, uh, but I managed to keep my temper in check and uh, just gently put it back in the box. Uh, nothing to do with the kit particularly, in my opinion, I'm, um, just as a newbie I really did bite off too much than I could chew. I should have gone for the for a, an easier kit that, like the Merkava that I'm doing at the moment. Um, but nevertheless, uh, he didn't know that, <laughs> he didn't know the problems I was having when I when he sent me this out. Uh, it's the um, AK's book on, uh, on the T55. There's about four builds in here and absolutely fantastic and you don't have to uh, be building a T55, be a, t a fan of the T55 to enjoy this book. It, I, I'm not going to open it again, copyright, you know, I, I'm, I'm always worried that I'm going to get done even though it's promoting, you know, I've got nothing but praise for this book. Um, it's something, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've never got a load of money, uh, things are pretty tight obviously um, and uh, for for Frederick to send that out to me was actually fantastic because it's something that it's either you know spend the money on a kit or yes I do buy reference books um, but even those I get in a bargain basement when I can get them so to send that out to me I've read it and reread it and reread it and I'm still reading it uh, there's so many things that you can take from this book and put it to the Merkava to the Schwimmwagen anything so um, highly highly recommended and also highly recommended to visit uh, Frederick's channel, that's the Hobby Shack. Uh, if you have, uh, I can't do links at the moment. I'm am just not good with a computer. I'm, you know, the wife keeps promising to show me all the things again, and uh, so far it's not happened. But I, I've got a firm promise that this Christmas she's going to sit down and and get me to be able to put, post links up to people's channels and things like that. So uh, I'm going to have another go. Add it uh, when I put this video before I put this video up. So if there are links, great. And if there isn't, uh, just go. I'm, I'm sure these guys will put a comment on the video, so you'll see their icons. Just click on them and take you straight to the channels. Uh, I have um, Otto does uh, m mainly uh, plastic war games figures. You know, again the old um, the old Airfixy type ones without being Airfix, if that makes sense. Uh, he does a lot of that stuff and bits and pieces in between. And Frederick uh, is a scale modeler, and you'll see 
see Aaron land on his on his channel, and he does some really high quality, high class feeds. So uh, please go and check him out. But that's the type of thing you'll see in the pages of the uh, of this type of thing. Um, you know, I can't uh, can't thank those guys enough for doing that for me, for the figure and for the uh, the book. Uh, it's much appreciated. Let me put this down without dropping it. So, guys, join me at the bench, and we'll have a quick look at the uh, the Schumbargen and the Merkava, and we'll see uh, the progress uh, that I've made on those. See you in a bit. Ooh. Right, guys, thanks for joining me down at the bench. Um, we've got the Schwimmwagen in front of us. Uh, for, forget the cocktail stick piercing through the, <laughs> the axle holes. Um, it, uh, it's just there to, to hold it when I'm spraying. Uh, I've done a bit of a spray inside before I put the two halves together and, and stuck the, the bits and pieces in, as usual, with me quite badly. Uh, it's, a pr it's amazing when you think, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm doing better, and then you, you look at things and think, oh, my life, there's bits stuck in the, you know, that's obviously... Although I did wipe things over, I've not wiped them over good enough and there's bits where I've um, been you know, sanding and stuff that's not been cleaned up good enough. Still, it's better to learn on things like this, I suppose. Uh, I am going to respray all in here anyway again. Not that it's going to really help the, the bits and pieces, I suppose. Uh, we, we're stuck with this one with... Well, not stuck. Um, what I mean is it's a very simplistic kit. So we will... It's how much time and, and effort do you throw at it? Uh, as I've mentioned before, we've got uh, this whole thing is just blanked off here. Well, there would be um, uh, air holes and different, you know, because obviously the engines on this at the back of this vehicle and bits and pieces uh, that when you see on the real ones, uh, there's a heck of a lot, uh, you know, that, that you could put into this, but. For my scratch building levels, it's just way, you know, even a little vehicle like this is way out of my league at the moment. So it's a case of making it look good enough that it can sit in with the figures um, because it's there really, as I've said before, to give the figures a bit of context. You know, they're on a recce and this is the vehicle they've come in type of thing. So it's, it's, a, it's try and make it look good enough um, without, you know, without ripping it to pieces and trying to be too clever because I've found out to my cost like on the T55 <laughs> I'm not built for being too clever so what we've done with this is I think the consensus was Gav uh, used epoxy putty to fill the gaps and put lots of mud on it so flipping it to the side I've just shown you that T55 tank book and one of the suggestions that one of the guy, guys in that he uses the epoxy putty to make mud uh, he says that's he says, sorry, I'm out of focus there, sorry. Uh, he, he says, uses the epoxy putty to make mud. And uh, and I really do, do think even at this scale, it, 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 or scale, you know, without without paint on and all the rest of it, it, and not being painted as mud yet, it does look the part. It's meant that I can fill these big holes in that were under here, if you remember, and obviously around the join, which you can still see a bit here, there, which I don't mind so much because it's going to have bits and pieces sludged in it anyway. Um, I've put it all where I think mud might be. This, I've left the top clean at the moment, only for working with it. I mean, I'm not going to douse the entire thing like it's been mud bogging, but um, I've put mud, you know, bits and pieces and underneath gaps and things, and it's just, hopefully, it's just, you know, covered up a lot of the imperfections in the kit. So we've gone with uh, everybody's suggestion more or less. <laughs> it's is using uh, potty to fill and lots of mud. So uh, that's our uh, that's our shrimp bag. And as I say, he's, he's going to have an overall paint job um, tomorrow. That's all going to be painted. Now I've, I'm going to I've put some white plastic potty on this on this canvas that's been uh, obviously rolled back. Now it was completely smooth, and it just if you painted it over, it would have just looked like a smooth bit of plastic. So when you put that, without knocking everything off, when you put that on, we at least get a bit of cover for the seats there. So, you know, we're not, it's not looking too bad. At least, you know, you're covering some of that, that area up. I'm hoping that when this is painted over, it doesn't just look like white potty that's been bodged over. I'm just trying to give a bit of rockled effect, if that makes sense. I will be painting up the seats just with a brush, just to try and make them look a bit more canvassy. 
and do a bit of chipping where I can reach and things like that. Sorry guys, I keep going out of them in shot here. Um, so yeah, so I think we're going to we'll retain that. I've seen this where it's on vehicles where it's completely missing, and as I say, they do give you a, a tarp that goes over, but it, it doesn't really bear much resemblance. And I've just broken off the, <laughs> one of the protective runners on that side. Oh well, <laughs> we'll be gluing that back later. That's having sausage fingers. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's going to go on there. Let's put him down again for a minute. And uh, where are the wheels? Yeah, we've got the wheels. Forgive the little figures. I'm practicing. Uh, I'm practicing uh, sculpting at the moment. Um, obviously, I've gone over in parts. I, I didn't spray them. I uh, hand paint. Well, I sprayed the the inners, the steel rims, uh, tires. I painted in myself. Um, and they'll obviously get treated with mud and stuff at the time. So we've got all those guys there. And obviously there'll be a washes on and some obviously we've got to have some the three tone or the two tone camo, whatever you want to call it, the the ready brown and the, the green. I've actually got a uh, a MIG, one of those three three paint bottle things that they sell. Uh, so that's gonna have acrylic acrylic on it. Now I think we'll probably have to adjust the camera for this one because it's quite large. Here's our here's our Merkava. Put some cut plastic card and off cuts. I always keep all the little off cuts on my right miser. <laughs> it's plumbing expensive stuff to buy. Then then I've just uh, covered it over, not brilliantly, but it's fairly smooth there. Um, I'm always worried with sticking these struts on that uh, they're not going to be straight. I've done my best with them, um, and they'll be holding the armoured skirts on, I presume. This bit here is a is a this, this piece here is, is separate, you build up these, it's got these bits intact. Now this is supposed to be rubber here, and this is where I don't want to go too mad, again with the, the you know, I've learnt my lesson, just, was it warped before you can run, so um, I'm just going to be painting those rubber, I'll try and, I'm not going to try and uh, stress them up a bit, or de-stress them I should say, you know, and uh, it, they'll just be painted like a rubber look to them. So that's our guy. All these are stuck on, like suspension bits. Some are already pre, obviously pre-cast on there. That one's uh, been stuck on. These guys here are stuck on. So that's our base, and this is our our main deck. Let's just see if we can go back on here a bit. It's a big old slab. Now, obviously, on a, uh, a Mark II, uh, three, four, uh, they have um, flat reactive armor plates on them. So, not like say the Russian ones where the, the little boxes and that. These are these are quite flat plates, but you'll see obviously where they're bolted on, obviously because they can be removed and replaced. Um, but on these these Mark ones, it's all just you know cast steel. You uh, put these uh, side uh, bins on here, and um, same here in the exhaust. The you can have the lights in either open or sh closed. I will probably go closed. I know the lights open gives it a bit of you know a bit of extra interest, but you know if you're in the daytime and that unless it's on convoy or something like that, I can't see why they'd have the lights on. So I'll probably have those shut down. I have been looking at loads and loads of Merkava videos. In fact, I should start a playlist actually and start putting them in that. Um, I'm just, I keep going backwards and forwards to having the whole thing buttoned up and then having crew figures on it because you get the one uh, which I'm not massively impressed with. But uh, I'm, I'm and also obviously you, if you have that open, you can see straight into an, an empty deck. Like although with the Merkava, like most of the main battle, battle tanks, the Turret goes quite quite over the top of it, so we'll see. Next time you see it, you'll know which decision I've made. So that's it, guys. That's the uh, that's our engine engine deck. I'm just doing a, a bit of time at night, you know, just uh, just doing a bit of sanding, a bit of cutting them down, sticking them on. So it's not uh, you know it's not rushing ahead, but I'm enjoying it. And uh, I've obviously done all these last night. 
not particularly great. Um, still see bits in there. It's always a way you put it near a camera. Uh, these are horrible to actually get the seam line off, and I haven't done a brilliant job on them. Before I prime them tomorrow, I might do it again tonight just to see if I can get some more sandpaper through and clear them up. But to be honest with you, from the side, once you've got road wheels on, I don't really think you'll see with the one at the top. I don't think you'll see a great deal. So that's uh, I've got loads of those um, little bits like this surf stretcher that goes on the back. He's got to be primed as well. So oh, I did say I'd show the figure. Here's our figure. Got a slight shine to him. The the I've noticed with this last batch of Vallejo that it's blooming shining up a lot. Uh, the actual black. So for the first time, I'm probably going to have to coat this with a with a matte coat, which I don't normally do on uh, on on display figures. I normally leave them as they are. Um, but uh, he's had uh, black with a bit of dark sea blue in, and. Uh, then some black, just just normal black into the shadow areas, and uh, he's also had as uh, the usual uh, black grey or German grey, whatever you want to call it, as a highlight as well. Obviously, you don't want to go over the top with his uh, with your blacks, um, but as I say, I'm not happy with that shine that we've got in places. So uh, he will be having to have a, a matte coat put over. I'm going to give him in the artwork. It shows uh, Otto, it shows them both in the reed green. But I wanted a, just a bit of a difference, so he's in the Panzer Black. Uh, Otto Karias is going to be in the Reed Green. Uh, it showed on the on the artwork again that um, this guy had black binos and uh, binoculars, and the Otto Karias had uh, yellow ones. Well, I'm swapping that round to put yellow on here, so obviously they stand out a bit from his black jacket. But uh, they're fairly simple simple figures to do. Once he's had his his flesh on, it'll look a lot better, I think. But uh, yeah, I'm a bit peed about it. Normally, it doesn't give you that that shine to it, but uh, it has on this occasion, and it has uh, it has on other other bits and pieces on the War Games figures I've been painting. It doesn't make a lot of difference because you're going to map them map them anyway. But uh, I don't normally do it on these these figures. But uh, yeah, that's a a bit of a, a a bugbear, but never mind. So guys, thank you very, very much for stopping by and taking a look. As you can see, we've got a bit of progress on all fronts. And uh, just to show, I do take people's advice on board. Although I'm looking down and I've noticed I've got a bit of a, a gap between the bonnet and the uh, on the shrimp bargain. It's amazing what you see. <laughs> right, guys, you take care of yourselves and we will catch each other very soon with another update. Cheers.